Hello friends. In this video, we are going to learn about different impacts of tariff. Tariffs are duties or taxes that are imposed on commodities which are exported or imported. There are different kinds of tariffs that the government charges. However, the kinds of tariffs charged by the government depends on the kind of trade strategies that the government might adopt. I urge you to read your text for understanding what do we mean by inward oriented strategies and outward oriented strategies as well as the different kinds of tariff. They are super simple and one can understand those topics just by reading it. Hence, I wouldn't be utilizing my time on making videos on those topics. Plus, there are different other YouTube videos which already cover these topics. However, the impact of tariff can be learned with the help of a diagram and that's what I'll be teaching you guys in this video. As we just saw, the tariffs are nothing but the taxes which are imposed on commodities or services which are exported or imported. So let's look at this diagram. On the x-axis, I have plotted quantities and on the y-axis, I have plotted prices. This is a downward sloping demand curve which is named as D, D1 and an upward sloping supply curve which is S, S1. Both the demand curve and the supply curve are the domestic demand and supply curves. The point of equilibrium showcases the equilibrium prices P2 and equilibrium quantity Q4 if there isn't any international trade that a country indulges in. However, countries around the world do trade with each other. As international trade leads to more competition between countries, the international prices of products are generally lower than the domestic prices. Let's say P are the international prices. Notice that the international demand curve is flat, indicating perfect competition. At prices P, the domestic demand for the product would be OQ. As people within the country are demanding OQ quantity. And the supply curve cuts the international demand curve at the point E. We can see that out of the total demand OQ, OQ2 is met by the domestic supply and Q2Q is met by the foreign supply. Now, as you can see, when the prices are P and the demand curve is PF, the total consumer surplus is the triangle D F P. However, let's say now that the government imposes tariff. An introduction of tariff would lead to rise in prices, let's say to the point P1. We can clearly see that after the imposition of tariff, the consumer surplus has decreased from DFP to DF1 P1. The total loss of consumer surplus because of the increased tariff is P P1 F1 F. As we can see that an increase in tariff is actually a loss to the consumers. However, is there any rationale for the government to increase tariffs then? It turns out that there is. This decreased consumer surplus is absorbed in the economy in different ways. Firstly, because of the increased tariff, there will be an increase in government revenue. As one can see, after the tariffs are imposed, OQ3 is the domestic supply 
and Q3, Q1 is the international supply. It is the international supply or international imports on which the governments would charge a tariff and that tariff can be showcased by this rectangle over here A, B, C, F1 As an increase in tariff increases government revenue we call this rectangle over here as the revenue effect We can also see that after the imposition of tariff the quantity supplied by the domestic supplier increases from Q2 to Q3. This showcases that an increased tariff increases the domestic production for the particular product. As this increase is guided by the government's protectionist policies, we call this increase in production as the protective effect. When the prices were P, the quantity supplied was Q2. However, after the imposition of tariff, the quantity increased to Q3. This Q3 quantities started to be sold at price P1. Hence, the total benefit to the producer is this rectangle P1, A, B, P. This is because now the producers are supplying OQ3 amount of quantities at price P1. Earlier they were supplying at prices P. So the increased revenue that is price into quantity would be the rectangle over here. However, the supply curve is also the marginal cost curve. Hence, the part AEB showcases the increased cost to the producers. Hence, the total benefit to the producer would be this area P, P1, A, E. As the decrease of consumer surplus has been transferred to the producers, this rectangle showcases us the redistributive effect. And finally, we know that when prices were P, the quantity demanded internationally was Q. However, after the imposition of tariff, the quantity dropped to Q1. This is a loss of consumption that takes place because of the imposition of tariff. The triangle CFF1 showcases us this consumption effect. Now let's come back to our original question. How was the total loss of consumer surplus absorbed? As we can see, most of the consumer surplus has been absorbed by the redistributive effect and the revenue effect as it is a benefit both to the producers as well as the government. However, the loss of consumption and the increased marginal cost for the producers are also the consequences of the increased tariffs which do not get absorbed. Hence, these triangles together cause a deadweight loss to the society. This is one of the reasons why the propagators of free trade would not want tariffs to be imposed. I hope this diagram helped you understand how tariffs impact the society. In the next video, we will see how quota impacts the society. That's it from this video. See you in the next one.